the time, take the time off of work, find someone who can help you at least for the first couple of days, I want to say. Um, I was lucky enough to have one of my family members help to take care of me, but you will definitely need some help after surgery. So plan this all beforehand. <laughs> Excuse me, have it written in stone, have a backup plan in case that person, you know, life happens and they fall through. Uh, but definitely make sure that you have someone with you. Big up. Um, also, what they may or may not tell you, my doctor told me because he's the best and he really cares about me. You are going to need to start doing mammograms. So be prepared to make yourself a yearly mammogram to kind of check out what's going on. Make sure that your um, implant is not ruptured. I went with silicone also. Uh, silicone is a slow leak. So unlike a saline where you kind of pop it and all the liquid leaks out, silicone is more of a gummy. So it would kind of like, mm, so hot ooze out <laughs> uh, so it would be a slow leak so it would be it could be that it takes a while for you to realize that your implant is even ruptured um, it's really hard to rupture them apparently so unless I'm skydiving and landing on my boobs I think I'm good uh, so yeah silicone silicone is the way to go silicone valley baby mentally prepare yourself for going under um, it's not as scary as it seems. I did so much research. I watched janky little YouTube videos um, of people going under. I don't know what country it was from, but it's just going to scare you even more. And it's kind of one of those things where you have to live through it um, in order to really understand how easy it is. Uh, my guy, my anesthesiologist, uh, was like an older fella. He... Um, <laughs> you can tell he'd just been in the biz for a lot of years. Um, he's seen it. He probably puts people to sleep and takes a nap, you know, like that's how confident he is in himself. So it wasn't that big of, it was pretty stressful. <laughs> and they set my IV up. I believe they put it in my hand because the, the nurse was trying to find one here and she couldn't get it. Apparently I have like really squiggly veins. So she actually put it, he came in and put it in my hand like with his eyes closed, bandaged me up. He's like, do you have any questions for me? And I was like, uh, yeah. I'm like, I'm sure you get this a lot. <laughs> this is gonna be really fucking annoying, but am I gonna die? <laughs> and he was like, this, I cannot answer. He was like, you can step out of your house and die. You can get hit by a car. And I was like, I don't know if this makes me feel any better or not, but giddy up, let's fucking do it. It's already in me, you know? Um, it's a little bizarre because you walk yourself to the... The operation room like you're not in here for a bad problem you're not unconscious you're it's not you walk yourself to the bed and you lay on the bed and the way that they have it i don't know if it's just strictly for breasts i'm sure he does a lot of breasts but like it's kind of like a cross a little bit so you got to lay down and like put your arms like this and at that point the smell of the room was like really not offending but it was spooky it was like a super clean hospital smell, which I'm not totally cool with. Um, so, you know, the tears start going and I'm like, okay, <laughs> little Miss Tatted comes up and like piercings and shit. And like, I'm laying on the bed crying and like the nurse is like super nice. It was freezing in there, which was the last question that I asked actually. Um, so I laid there for a little bit. Jams were pumping. They had all kinds of, like they had a huge speaker above. I remember that I was like looking up and they had a huge speaker. Uh, so I'm like, all right, this is cool. Like <laughs> this, this is a good place for my last, last being, you know, this, this is a co cool memory to bring with me to my next realm. Um, anyway, so yeah, laying there, uh, they all come in. I'm like, yo, welcome to the party. Actually, no, wait, that's a lie. Doctor comes in, you sit up, you take your shirt off, marks you up. Any last questions? Speak now or forever hold your peace, you know? And... At that point, I don't have any questions. I trust him. I know he's going to do what he's going to do. Um, so I just asked him if he was excited. I'm like, yo, are you excited? And he was like, for what? And I was like, to do this. Like, I just want to know that you're excited. I need to know that you are like super pumped to do this. And he was like, huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And uh, I'm like, okay, sec. So I gave him a little fist bump. I was like, one last question are you going to give me sick tits? 
keep in mind, I think that I'm going under, I'm gonna die, so I'm like, might as well just fucking kick it off with a good joke, you know? Um, to which he kind of giggled, uh, tripped over his little stool, I had him all kind of off, you know? And I was like, you can give me sick tits? And he was like, of course. And I was like, all right, this is what I need. This is what I need to hear. This is cool. I feel reassured. He leaves the room and then a flood of people come in and I'm like, oh my God, okay, this is really happening. I'm like, whoo, you're like sitting like this and they start to kind of strap you in. I think they strapped me in. Don't quote me on that, but I think they did. So you're like this, they're putting like things on you to kind of, I guess, keep you alive, <laughs> to monitor you and keep you alive. And um, last thing I remember is being like, whoa, why is it so cold in here? And then the anesthesiologist who's standing right here, he was like, so the germs die. And then next thing I remember, bam, I'm waking up, I'm in the bed. It's like, it's private, you know? And I just remember kind of opening my eyes and all of a sudden I was like shivering, like uncontrollably. I remember being like, and like I was trying to tell someone that I was awake because I was like, whoa, like I'm awake. Like it's just so bizarre. It's so bizarre. It's kind of cool. It's like fucking weird, but it's also pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I was freezing. And then the nurse comes over and she's like, oh, hey, like, are you okay? And I was like, I'm like really cold. And she injected something into my IV and all of a sudden it was just like, oh, and I was like, okay, sick. I was like, excuse me, do I have new breasts? And she was like, yes. And I was like, <laughs> sick. <laughs> Take your pain medication regularly. Don't wait until the pain kicks in um, because then you run the risk of kind of overdosing yourself by trying to get rid of the pain. So just take it. Um, they gave me both T3s, Tylenol, like an extra strength, extra, extra, extra strength Tylenol, um, and Dilaudid. They gave me a shit ton of Dilaudid. Didn't touch my Dilaudid. Um, the pain, honestly, that's everybody's first question. For me, it wasn't that bad because I feel like my, I already had a significant amount of breast tissue and I had the skin. So essentially all they were doing was filling out the skin that I had and the breast tissue that I had. So there was no, there wasn't a big stretch of the skin. Um, I feel like if you're going from an A cup, uh, or, you know, a little bit on the, the, flatter side to put it frankly um and then you're gonna be stretching the skin out quite a bit i feel like your pain could be different i also had a lift which was pretty intense um everything is redone my whole breast area is just woke up with act like brand new titties um so my scars run underneath there is a scar here and then there is also a scar around my areola uh Healing wise, everything goes great. This is why it's super important to go to a good doctor who knows what he's doing. Um, it's a 50-50 obviously, uh, but the way that the doctor handles your skin is very important to the start of your healing process. Whatever you do when you go home, that's up to you. However your body is prone to healing is also out of your control. Um, but go to a skilled doctor who knows how to sew you up after. Highly recommend. My scars look great. Carl Schwartz is a magician. Um, that was another one of my big things was I was like, oh my God, I'm going to be scarred forever. Um, if you go to a good doctor, luckily I have good skin. Um, I've known from other things that uh, I heal correctly. I have no issues healing. Um, a week beforehand, I ate like a shit ton of carrots, a shit ton of uh, nuts, uh, apples, eat, 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 eat. I gave my body good stuff so it could heal itself. <laughs> not to brag or anything 